Starbase, Texas, where the future is being built. And spooky, scary things happen. Ooh. All right, that's, that's enough of that. And sometimes things explode. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh my God. Yep, that's Starbase. I bet you're wondering how something like this could happen. And well, it's Halloween time and all seasoned tank watchers out there will remember that Starbase has been home to some pretty scary events over the years. We've had vehicle breakups, we've had explosions, we've had wildfires, and of course, whatever you call this. So we thought it would be fun to put together of some of the scariest moments in Starbase so far and look at some of the lessons that hopefully SpaceX has learned as they've developed this vehicle. Plus, I bet some of you weren't even around, or maybe you just don't remember when these things happened. So let's get started. It's Spooky Starbase, sponsored by Solar Expanse. Now, there has been a good number of scary events in Starbase over the years, so we'll have sort of a priority list and we'll do some honorable mentions at the end. Plus, I'll be rating everything on a scariness scale so you can follow along, have your own ratings, and put them in the comments so you can weigh in and let us know what you think was the spoopiest moment in Starbase history. One of the first big oopsies, as we call it in the aerospace industry, with Starhopper was just after its 20 meter hop, way back in June of 2019. Oh God, has it really been that long? Uh, that alone is scary. The flight was short, but successful. But after landing, it started a wildfire that spread far and wide. It was even visible from satellite pictures. This was one of the first yikes moments for the Starship program in Boca Chica. Up until then, there had been a few spin primes of Starhopper, some fiery static fires, and a small tethered hop of just a few inches, but nothing of this magnitude at least in terms of scariness. I'll give the 20 meter hop wildfire a two out of 10 on the scariness scale, but back then it probably would have ranked a little bit higher. I'll never forget Andy questioning whether or not the fire would reach all the way to Boca Chica Village. And suffice to say, for residents of the village, this event would probably rank a little bit higher, given the proximity to their homes. Throughout Starhopper's test campaign, there were several moments where we thought we were about to have to bid farewell to this venerable vehicle. In fact, just before that 20 meter hop I just mentioned, Starhopper attempted the 20 meter hop, but the engine lighted up and then it aborted. Somehow, the flame out of that Raptor engine ignited a methane tank vent and created this massive 60 foot long flamethrower. It was very cool, very heavy metal looking, but there was that thought in all of our minds watching that this fire could easily spread out of control and make Starhopper go boom. Thankfully it didn't, but I'd say that was a very close call. I give the Starhopper flamethrower a 5 out of 10 on the scariness scale because that could have been really bad, but I give it a 10 out of 10 on the coolness scale, which I'm just going to invent out of whole cloth right now. I can't help but imagine an engineer in the control room like, ah, stop the vent, stop the vent, ah, the pressures are rising, start the vent, start the vent, oh god, it's a flame, stop the vent, like, it's, to be a fly in the wall, huh, that would have been amazing. Now, we have one more Starhopper moment here, and this one came during its 150 meter hop. You may not know this, but it was actually very close to going very wrong, especially as Starhopper came in for a landing. It was kind of hard to tell as it happened, but looking back, it's easy to see that the engine was basically eating itself as the vehicle was descending. It had a bit of a hard landing. In fact, there were a bunch of COPVs that were liberated and flew away in true, I must go, my people need me, fashion. The crush cores on the feet of Starhopper were all destroyed and there might have been some cracks in the concrete landing pad. It was quite a mess, but hey, it did land in one piece and that's what matters. I'll give Starhopper's engine eating itself while landing a two out of 10 on the scariness scale, but it definitely could have been much worse. And if it had gone that way, we certainly wouldn't be seeing Starhopper hanging around the launch site today at least not in one piece. It seems like the main lesson here with Starhopper is that SpaceX needed to refine the Raptor engine and the flight hardware to avoid vehicles making their own flamethrowers and having hard landings. The wildfires though, didn't stop there. And really, neither did the hard landings. I think it's safe to say that one of the scariest moments in Starbase history so far is when SN4 exploded. Now, before we get into even more spectacular explosions, I'm gonna hand it over to Das, who's gonna tell us about something special. Hey y'all. So, you know, we're always looking for cool stuff to share with you here on the channel, and you probably know that I'm a huge space game nerd. So when we got a message from Solar Expanse claiming to be a realistic space game, I thought, all right, 
let's give it a look. All right, it shows Mars, that, that's realistic. Saturn has moons, realism good so far. Asteroid mining, probably a little bit more involved than that. <gasps> Is that a pork chop plot? Y'all, that's a pork chop plot. Okay, cool. That gets it some credibility from me. I mean, you know what a pork chop plot is? A pork chop plot is basically a way to depict a, a shopping list almost for an interplanetary trajectory. So on the x-axis, you have the, the launch date, right? And on the y-axis, you have the arrival date. And the colors show you how much energy each one of those uh, trajectories will take. I mean, long story short, if you have more energy available in the spacecraft, you can trade that energy to get there more quickly, which is important if you have humans, I don't know, going to Mars. <coughs> cough, cough, starship. Anyways, the name of the game is Solar Expanse. Not even selling anything. It's not even out yet, but go check out their Steam page. Maybe put it on your wish list if you want and give it a look whenever it comes out. I think they're working on a demo that you can check out. You know the drill. There's a link down in the description for you to check out if you want. And let's get you back to the main video. Thanks, Das. For a bit of context here, the SN4 vehicle was the fourth iteration of the ship portion of the rocket, sort of. They had tested SN1, SN2, and SN3, both 1 and 3 being complete tank sections. And now, SpaceX was testing SN4. This was the first one that had successfully passed cryogenic proof testing, and the first vehicle to perform engine testing other than Starhopper. The test vehicle had performed four static fires up until this point, so it was already starting to feel a little bit routine. This last static fire seemed to go well, but then a minute or so later, a lot of vapor started coming off the bottom of the vehicle. Now, of course, if that were methane, Yeah, me saying that on stream just before the explosion is going to haunt me forever, but that's the way it goes. This was quite a big boom, and early in the program. One of my first instincts was in fact to ask Mary if she was okay, because it was obviously a very energetic event. It definitely had me scared for a moment. According to Elon, the reason for this failure was apparently a failed test of the quick disconnect umbilical. Basically, the lines that supply a propellant to the ship while on the stand. Looking back on the SN4 explosion still kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. Although, things could have gone a lot worse. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, and the program continued on. I'll give the SN4 explosion a 9 out of 10 on the spookiness scale. I really don't think there's been many other moments, if any, in Starbase that creeped us out quite as much. Now let's jump forward from SN4 all the way to Ship 24, a much different vehicle. Ship 24 had the then brand new Raptor 2 engine, simpler and more powerful than Raptor 1. The day was September 8, 2022, and Ship 24 was performing a six-engine static fire test on suborbital pad B. The test appeared to go well, but it kicked up burning debris well outside the launch perimeter and started a small fire, but that small fire grew and, well, became a larger fire. Thankfully, this wildfire wasn't as big as the one caused by Starhopper, but it was just after the completion of the environmental assessment, and we all kind of had it in our minds that maybe this isn't the best time for this to be happening. This wasn't really a scary moment per se, at least not from a human harm standpoint, but a big yikes at a really tense moment in the program. Is there a yikiness scale? I feel like there should be one, and this is probably up there on that scale. Although there was one funny moment out of it when we saw a dumpster at the launch site catching fire. That's right, one time Starbase was a literal dumpster fire. I give this one a three out of 10 on the scariness scale. Not super scary, but definitely worth mentioning. As I mentioned earlier, SN4's kaboom would not be the last explosion at Starbase. One of the other big booms that we had came with Booster 7 back in July of last year. The booster had done a bunch of cryogenic proof testing and had its shiny new 33 engines installed and was going to perform a 33 engine spin prime test. And well, it did perform a spin prime test, but things didn't quite go as expected. This is a big yikes in my book. It didn't destroy the pad or anything, but it did do a fair bit of damage. Not only that, but it also started a fire near the tower that damaged equipment nearby. This is one of several times that we all thought Booster 7 was done for, and that the launch pad would need some serious work. Thankfully, that never happened, but still, quite the jump scare. Ooh. This failure prompted SpaceX to install the now ubiquitous FireX system, which displaces methane in the air prior to booster engine tests, to avoid explosions just like this. Now, I give Booster 7's Spin Prime detonation a 7 out of 10 on the scariness scale, and I give it a 10 out of 10 on the lessons learned scale. And if you're wondering why there's so many scales, you can blame Alex, who wrote the script. In fact, go in the comments and say, Alex, this is your fault. We've got a spookiness scale, a scariness scale, a coolness scale, 
a yikes scale, a lessons learned scale. How many scales do we need? Either way, SpaceX was able to pick up the pieces and keep on with the Starship program, and that's what matters. Another moment similar to this happened with SN8, and no, I'm not talking about its spectacular crash landing. Long before serial number 8 was ready to fly, it performed a static fire, but it didn't look exactly right. For starters, it threw out a bunch of debris, and then we started seeing pieces of molten something dripping from under the ship. Then about a half an hour later, Elon tweeted that SpaceX had lost control of the pneumatics on the vehicle, and that the pressure on the oxidizer header tank was increasing. Which is quite a thing to read when you're live on air and wondering what the heck is going on. We later learned that the issue was caused by a chunk of martite, a special heat resistant type of concrete that was thrown up into the engine bay, severing an avionics cable. Obviously, you see that and your first thought is, okay, well, it's done. It's going to explode and it's not going to fly. And we're going to have to wait a year until any flight happens. But there was hope. The same Elon tweet said that the tank had a burst disc to release the pressure. These burst discs are essentially valves or some piece of material covering an opening of the tank that are meant to break apart after a certain pressure has been reached but before that pressure reaches a catastrophic level for the rest of the vehicle. Thankfully, the burst disc worked, and it didn't pop the cork, as Elon so eloquently put it. I give this one a 5 out of 10 on the scariness scale. SpaceX ultimately fixed up the area underneath Pad B to avoid the issue, but let's just say SpaceX has a long and storied history of concrete flying around Starbase. And yes, by that, I am referring to Starship's first fully integrated test flight. In hindsight, that was a yikes fest with really scary moments all around. We had the concrete flying everywhere. We had the crazy power slide off the pad. We had HPUs exploding, engines blowing up, the entire stack Did it just do a Kerbal? As Das put it. And then the flight termination system didn't actually terminate the flight. It was truly quite a show, at least for those that got to see it. Not, not, not for me. I didn't get to see it. Stupid clouds! Urgh, clouds! This is probably like an eight or a nine on the yikes scale, but what did you expect? This is the first flight of Starship. Things were going to go wrong. The important part is that SpaceX learned from it and moved on with the program. Now we've covered the issues that happened in many videos over the last couple months, but suffice to say that Starship's first integrated test flight was not great. I'd say Starship Flight 1 was a four out of 10 on the scariness scale and another 10 out of 10 in lessons learned. Now, all we need to see is these lessons applied to the real world and Starship to do better on Flight 2. Although, maybe next year if we do another one of these scary videos, the hot staging event will make it in because, holy cow, that's going to be interesting. Now, let's get into some of the honorable mentions. Remember when SpaceX was trying to learn how to weld steel tanks and they just kept popping every time they did a cryo-proof test? Mark 1, serial number 1, serial number 3, each and every one was supposed to do grand things, according to Elon, but sometimes tanks can go pop during a pressure test. As a treat. It just means they're happy. Another honorable mention is when serial number 9 fell over in the high bay while it was being constructed. Remember that? It wasn't very funny back then, but looking back it's kind of hilarious. Though at the time, we did all sort of think SN9 was done for. Although maybe it should have been, for reasons I'm legally obligated not to disclose. Another honorable mention is, of course, serial number 10's post-landing fire and subsequent explosion, which took everybody by surprise. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Oh my god. Including you yours truly. Although, RIP SN10, I still say you landed first. Another scary moment in the Starship Low Altitude Hop program was, of course, SN11. Now, I'm still mad at SN11, once again because of clouds, but... When SN11 exploded and debris started to rain around the launch site, that was pretty scary. I wish we could have seen it because how spectacular would it have been to see a starship 500 feet off the ground just going kablooey. Either way, I give SN11's explosion a 5 out of 10 on the scariness scale and a 10 out of 10 on the coolness scale. Although, I'm going to invent yet another scale here and say I give it a 0 out of 10 on the fun scale because we didn't get to see it, which really stinks. Another honorable mention that we can't miss was when the hydraulic system on the chopsticks failed and then spilled hydraulic fluid everywhere. Oh. 
In fact, I'm pretty sure that the dumpster fire I mentioned a moment ago was in fact caused by that dumpster having been full of hydraulic fluid. Though, my memory could be wrong here. Thankfully, they weren't lifting Booster 7 when the chopsticks broke, but if they had been, do I even need to say it? Yikes. Kind of interesting that this vehicle ended up flying after all the things it went through. Even its companion, Ship 24, suffered an issue very early on in its test campaign when a pipe burst inside of its payload bay and broke a bunch of tiles on the outside. Of course, despite the scary moments, progress here in Starbase is not slowing down. And if anything, we'll see some more explosions and there'll be some more yikes here in the future. But the important part is that SpaceX is able to pick up the pieces and move on. This video is not meant to chastise SpaceX, and once again, if anything, I applaud their ability to rapidly iterate their vehicles in service of making humanity multiplanetary. All right, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it, and happy Halloween. Once again, maybe let us know in the comments what your scariest moment in Starbase was. And NSF isn't going anywhere. We will be here to bring you the great moments and the scary ones going forward. Oh, uh, Das, was there something else you needed to say? By the way, Solar Expanse, those rockets need to go around the Earth if they're going into orbit.